Limits of functions. Limits of a constant function. The limit of a constant function at a point C is the constant value of the function. Limit x approaches C of k is k. So we could have the limit as x approaches 5 of 3 is equal to 3. And uh, this number, that number does not matter if we're taking the limit of a constant. Imagine uh, this right here is 3. And we want to know what y is approaching as x is approaching 5. Well, y would be approaching 3 from the right, and y would be approaching 3 from the left. So no matter what this number is right here, the answer will always be 3. Limits of the identity function. The limit of the identity function at any point c is c. So the limit as x approaches c of x is equal to c. So we could have the limit as x approaches 5 of x would be equal to 5. So if we're approaching a value of, let's say, 5 right here on the x, then because the function is y equals x, the y value will be approaching 5 as well. Properties of limits. The sum property. The limit as x approaches c of f of x plus g of x. Well, if you take the limit of a sum, you can take the sum of the limits. Uh, that works with subtraction as well. And on this one, we have the scalar multiple property. If you're multiplying a function times k and taking the limit of that, you can pull the k out front and you're going to get the same value. Uh, we have uh, the limit of a, of a product. It can be the product of the limits. Same with division. And we have the power property. If the limit as x approaches c of f of x of n, uh, if we have this, then we could uh, take the limit and raise that to the n as well. And the same thing works with square root. So if we have square root or third root or fourth root or whatever, uh, you, can, you can bring the limit to the inside and take the root later. Use the properties of limits to evaluate well, the following here. Uh, we could split this into the limit as x approaches 3 of x squared plus limit as x approaches 3 of 2x minus limit as x approaches 3 of 4. And uh, we could even extend it further and say the limit as x approaches 3 of x uh, squared, we can write that, uh, then plus limit as x approaches 3 of 2 uh, times limit as x approaches 3 of x and then minus limit as x approaches 3 of 4, then we can use all the properties we just talked about. The limit as x approaches 3 of x is 3, 3 squared is 9, plus the limit as x approaches 3 of 2 is 2, times 3, and then minus 4. Uh, so we could have 9 plus 6 minus 4, 15 minus 4, uh, that ends up being 11. Now that's the same exact thing if you just plug 3 uh, into uh, the X's, but uh, they want you to use the, the properties, so there you go. We could do the same thing with uh, this, but it's much more convenient, much easier just to plug in the values, uh, but the properties still hold. Now we'd have 2 minus 3 over, uh, that's uh, 1, so we'd have negative 1. Uh, and the same thing here, you can do the square root of limit as X approaches 2, of x plus 4. So we have the square root of 6. Limits of functions. Limits of polynomial functions. If p of x is a polynomial function and c is a real number, then the limit as x approaches c of p of x equals p of c. In other words, do just what I talked about. Just plug c in for x and see if it works. Limits of rational functions. If r of x equals p of x over q of x is a rational function and c is a real number, then the limit as x approaches c of r of x equals r of c. In other words, just plug it in. As long as q of c does not equal 0, we can't divide by 0. Use direct substitution, if possible, to evaluate. If not possible, explain why. So the limit as x approaches negative 3 of this function would be 9 plus 1 over 3 minus 2, which is 10. The limit as x approaches negative 4 of square root of x plus 3 would be the square root of negative 4 plus 3 would be negative 1, so we would say not possible. And because we'd have an imaginary solution. Use factoring. Evaluate the following. If you plug 3 in, you get 9 minus 3 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. That wouldn't be an issue. 
But in the denominator, we'd have 3 minus 3. That's a problem. We can't have 0 in the denominator. So let's factor. We're going to write the limit as x approaches 3 of x. Uh, we'd have to have minus 3 x plus 2 over x minus 3. Well, those will cancel out, and we have the limit as x approaches 3 of x plus 2. Now the answer is 3 plus 2. The answer is 5. The limit as x approaches negative 2 of x plus 2 over x to the third plus, well, all of this right here. Uh, if we plug negative 2 and we get negative 8, uh, then we'd get uh, plus 8. We'd get plus 6 minus 6, so that's going to be 0 in the denominator. We have the limit as x approaches negative 2 of x plus 2 over. We can factor an x squared out of the first two and get x plus 2. And we can factor out a negative 3 out of the... The next two here which is x plus 2 so now we have the limit as x approaches negative 2 of x plus 2 over x squared minus 3 times x plus 2 we have the limit as x approaches negative 2 of we can cancel those out we have 1 over x squared minus 3 and when we plug 2 negative 2 in for that x we get 1 over 4 minus 3 which is 1. Use rationalizing. Evaluate limit as x approaches 1 of square root of x minus 1 over x minus 1. Well, if we plug 1 in the denominator, we're going to get 0 in the denominator. To avoid that, we're going to multiply by the square root of x plus 1, which is the conjugate of the top. So we have square root of x plus 1. We have the limit as x approaches 1 of x uh, then we'll have uh, 0 in the middle for outside and inside. And then we will have minus 1 over. We have x minus 1 times square root of x plus 1. And the x plus 1s now will cancel out. We have the limit as x approaches 1 of 1 over square root of x plus 1. When we plug 1 in, uh, we're going to get 1 over 1 plus 1. And the answer is 1 half. Limits of power functions at infinity. For any positive integer n, the limit as x approaches infinity of x to the n is equal to infinity. Uh, even if n is positive, uh, the will go up to infinity as x goes to infinity. And even if uh, the n is odd, uh, we'll still shoot off to infinity uh, to the right. Now, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x to the n is infinity if n is even. If n is even, the ending behavior is both infinity. Uh, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of x to the n is negative infinity if n is odd. And a good example here would be if f of x was equal to x to the third. As x goes to negative infinity, y is shooting down to negative infinity. Limits of polynomial functions at infinity. Let p be a polynomial function, p of x equals a sub n x of n plus, and then all the way down to the constant then the limit as x approaches infinity of p of x is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity uh, of the leading term, the leading uh, values here. Uh, and, and it's going to be a combination of a sub n being positive or negative and n being even or odd. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of p of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a negative infinity of, again, the leading term. So limits of polynomial functions at infinity. Limit as x approaches negative infinity of 2x to the 4th plus x to the 3rd and minus 7. Now the ending behavior, uh, we don't need x to the 3rd and minus 7 for that. We just need this right here. And 2x to the 4th graphs something like that. So the limit as x approaches negative infinity is positive infinity. So this one's infinity. The limit as x approaches negative infinity of x to the 5th, this doesn't matter for ending behavior. Uh, it, the, the graph of this looks something on the ends at least, like that. So as x approaches negative infinity, uh, y is approaching negative infinity. So this is negative infinity. The limit as x approaches infinity for x to the third, well, you know, we don't need this uh, for the ending behavior. x to the third looks like this right here. So the limit as x approaches infinity is infinity. Limits of reciprocal function at infinity. 
the limit of a reciprocal function at positive or negative infinity is going to be zero. To the right, one over x levels off at zero, and to the left, one over x levels off at zero. For any positive integer n, the limit as x approaches either plus or minus infinity of one over x to the n is equal to zero. So it could be one over x squared, it could be one over x to the third, all of these level off to zero. Limits of rational functions at infinity. Evaluate. Limit as x approaches negative infinity of 2x plus 1 over 3x minus 4. Uh, we've talked about ending behavior when we graph these rational functions. When the powers are the same, all we have to do is look at the coefficients. So this function levels off to 2 thirds. The limit as x approaches infinity of 2x to the third minus x squared over 3x squared minus 1. Well, we look at the leading terms. This cancels to 2x over 3, and now the limit as x approaches infinity of this is equal to infinity. If we have the limit as x approaches infinity of, let's say, 3x squared minus 1 over 2x to the third minus x squared, and we're going to take a look at the leading terms for ending behavior, we'd have the limit as x approaches infinity of 3 over 2x and this goes to zero.